Hey guys, happy Monday. Welcome back to the COVID Cocktail Club. We are bringing you this Monday a nice riff on a Manhattan, which is a really nice change for me since last time we did a Michelada and I was not the world's biggest fan. But I know this one we are gonna like a lot. There's a few really cool things that it has going for it. One is that it's a Manhattan riff, so that means automatically I'm probably going to like it. The other is that it's using aged rum, which Jason is on a, a huge kick to make sure everybody falls as in love with it as he has. And I am newly swayed as well. So now I'm, I'm excited about using my Pompero Anniversario that I, uh, that's my second bottle. So I'm going through a lot of it through this quarantine. And the other neat thing about it is that it came from this Death & Co book, which is one of the really like, for most amazing cocktail books ever. Having said that, I feel like a lot of recipes in here are sort of unapproachable and a little bit difficult. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say that, Jason? Uh, yes, I would say uh, as, as our bars have gotten bigger and broader, I would say it's less an issue, but I would say yes, for the average person who's got a few of the things we've been experimenting with, it's a little intimidating, but it is a good, I wouldn't call it a starter book, but I would say it's a good like foundation piece if you do want to, expand your bar because it's not just about spirits it's also about like barware and glassware and tool it's it's not just recipes i agree with that but i do find it's it's also a beautiful book it's like cloth bound but i do think it's intimidating and there are a lot of things in there that even i'm not gonna gonna infuse or make or you know or try but this book does have in it a whole section of manhattan riffs and this is in that section and it's also a very simple one to make. This is a super straightforward, super simple cocktail to make. So I think it will be a fun one to share with you guys. And it's also another way that if you are apprehensive on the age drum, even though you have to trust us, it's delicious. This is another way to get into, like we've done Campari, we're trying to get you to like Campari. This is a good one to test your feelings on age rum because it actually has some very similar attributes, that's a good word, right, to bourbon. Yeah, but it doesn't stand alone in this one. So this is one that I think you'll like. No citrus, everything is liquor. So we're going to stir it. And we're gonna start with two ounces of aged rum. What aged rum are you using? This uh, Kirk and Sweeney, it is delicious. It's a Dominican rum, it's been aged 18 years. Truth be told, I bought this and two or three other versions because um, I like, well, one, they were aged 15, 18 years. I love this bottle, that was beautiful. So that's sort of my way to sort of test them out. No matter how beautiful the bottle is, if I don't like it, I won't buy it again. Yeah, I like this one so far. I've been drinking this one actually on the rocks with a splash of the cinnamon simple syrup. Why, what, what's that face for? It's delicious. It's on the rocks with cinnamon simple syrup. So you're making... Uh, rum old fashioned, sure, yes. Nope. Three quarters an ounce of sweet vermouth. So it actually calls for this punkiness which is fun to say. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what did you call it? Punti me. Any sweet vermouth you have, I think will probably work in here, but uh, since I had a bottle and it actually specifically called for it, I am going to use it. Do you, do you find it's any different? Not really, I think it's interchangeable. Although I, I will say after a few of these, especially if you have like a group of people that are drinking a lot of these, it is fun to get everyone to say punti me like over and over again and see how the name changes the more drinks you drink. I think the Punti Mass is a little bit more bitter and the Cokie is a little bit sweeter. So maybe that's why it called for the Punti Mass because the- Would be too sweet. The rum is already a little bit sweeter than a bourbon, plus the Averna, which is also gonna make it very sweet. So maybe that was, uh, you know, for a balancing effect. Half an ounce of Averna. One dash of orange bitters. I suspect these orange bitters are actually gonna make a big difference here. One dash? One dash. And I'm actually, just to get ahead, as you guys will soon see, there's no garnish in this, so where normally you would, you would have a good cherry, no shitty cherries. There is no cherry in this Manhattan variation. So I'm adding a spiced cherry bitters, just a, just a little dash. You can't compare them, but it sounds good. Notice we're not chilling our coops because we both sort of, we talked about it beforehand and, and decided that this was a drink that 
feels like it shouldn't be served too, too freezing cold because it feels like a, a cigar kind of drink. Yeah, similar to the grave that we just did. Well, but that one was actually room temperature. We're going to stir this one over, over ice. Right, but we didn't chill the glass. Correct. It was more of like a close out the evening kind of drink that this, this reminds me of. It's more of a sit on your velvet sofa and, and smoke a cigar and less of a sit by your pool kind of drink. Uh, would you do me a favor, when you're done with this, will you send me a picture with you on your velvet sofa with your, with your cigar, please? Yeah, sure. Because I can send you a picture by the pool. I need to see a picture with you and your velvet sofa and cigar. Well, th that's my lifestyle, so. I, I, I was just gonna say, is this a lifestyle cocktail? Absolutely. Not gonna let me live that one down, are you? Never. Never. Okay. Get, get it nice. Okay. This one I'm making sure to stir with pretty decent sized rocks because I really don't want to over dilute this one. So I'm using my, I think they're um, an inch and a quarter squares here for 20 seconds. Okay, so now that we've stirred that, we can. You know, Stanley Tucci made his martini online. No, he says actually you pour it over, over rocks and you actually let it sit for 45 seconds before you stir it. No. Never heard that before. Just saying. Okay. I'm going to strain it into my coupe glass. That's a really good glass for this one. I don't have one. That's, that's a, it's more of like an ornate, very pretty, antique looking glass, right? He's beautiful, isn't he? And I don't. Uh, again, no garnish. This is this is all about simplicity on this one, guys. That's all. That's a smaller glass. It's got to be. Look how full it is. Well, yeah. I think it's also kind of full because you made me sit there letting it dilute. You want know, to talk about Sandy Tucci? I like Sandy Tucci. Go see Big Night. That's that's uh, that's my that's my words of wisdom for the day. If you've not seen Big Night, Sammy Tucci, uh, Tony Shalhoub, would you like to discuss Wednesday now? Okay. So we're going off of like, a, would you call this like a stepbrother to a martini? Cousin? Brother-in-law? Whatever. So uh, yes, there is a James Bond connection with this drink. So Wednesday, have your martini, have your coupe glasses ready. I must, I must say martini glass. Have your coupe glasses chilled, ready to go. Have your vodka, have your gin, we're mixing the two, and have your, well, I have a few options. You have Lele, you have, what else, Koki, Americano, anything else you suggest? And if you don't have those, any other dry vermouth? Yeah. And a lemon. So, again, another simple drink. Uh, come Friday, we're going to go way off course. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Cheers, Rice. Cheers, Jason.